Hello, everyone, and welcome to PlatformCon 2023. I'm Niels Berger Tüksen, Principal Engineer at Humanitech. I'm presenting today a more cultural talk about testing your platform setups. I've been working in software testing for more than 25 years, and I had the pleasure to build Humanitech's platform orchestrator together with my colleagues. I'd like to start with a quote by Brian Finster from his talk building an effective delivery platform given at PlatformCon last year. He's essentially saying, treat your platform as a product and describing in his talk uh, how, to apply a more, uh, how to apply a modern or agile software development um, process and principles um, to building your platform as a product. And this includes like analyzing this, the current state, like how are you running your platform uh, today or how, how achieve developers um, basically that their uh, changes get released. Um, then interviewing all the stakeholders, defining first user stories, and then building prototypes and iterating on them. He's also touching on much more topics and I can highly recommend um, uh, watching his talk actually. But it kind of makes it obvious to me that um, building your platform as a product um, um, with this setup, it makes a lot of sense to also apply modern software testing principles. So how, how do we actually ensure a qualitative development and release of your platform? Classically, as a QA expert, I would start with defining a test strategy. Let's describe this not in an ESTQB certified testing terms, as I'm expecting um, here to not only talk to QA expert, but maybe rather in a way everyone understands. So a testing strategy should include something like what to test, so what's in scope and what's actually out of scope uh, for, your, for, for your platform to be, to be verified then how to test things, like on which levels, like should I test this on, on API level, should I test this on UI level, um, or maybe on infrastructure level, how is the testing documented, and then also what kind of frameworks do I want to use uh, for, for testing my platform setup. And then when to test um, um, basically in the software development lifecycle. So here, usually comes in handy a testing pyramid where you define like um, uh, this would be covered in my in my unit test and then on top I've, I would build some sort of integration tests um, and then uh, on top of that there would come like maybe API end-to-end -end test, UI tests, uh, things, like, things like that. And then I would also define responsibility. So who is taking care of what? And this highly depends on your team structure and how you want to uh, approach the whole topic of testing. Like in, in some teams, it, it makes sense to have uh, testing embedded as a role into your development teams, for example. Or in other teams, it, it makes more sense to have a more um, uh, dedicated team or more dedicated personnel uh, to deal with uh, verification and release of changes, for example. Creating a test strategy is great and a good thing to do, but what's more essential is defining testable user stories. Let's get a little bit more concrete about that. So here I define an example user story in behavior-driven development format. So it's, it's, it's readable, it's clear. Um, and it basically states, given as a developer, I can add an environment variable to my application. When I deploy my configuration changes, then I expect my running application to have access to that environment variable. That sounds pretty simple and straightforward, but let's map this onto an example of a reference architecture of an internal developer platform. So here we see an example of a reference architecture um, built on top of AWS. Um, these sort of reference architectures, they are also um, part of a couple of other talks here at Platform.com, and they have been uh, essentially created in cooperation with uh, McKinsey and Humanitech to provide some good examples on how a platform setup uh, could look like from the architecture pr perspective. So when we try to map our user story here, then um, we would basically um, see that the 
uh, dev um, the developer would add the environment variable to the workload specification. And in this case, this would be done with uh, with score, score.dev. This is also a project from, from Humanitech, uh, open source. Um, and um, after this environment vari variable has been added and, and the code has been reviewed and, um, and, and, and merged to, to the main branch, then um, a CI pipeline would be triggered. In this case, it would be GitHub Actions, right? And then towards the end of, the, um, uh, of this pipeline, an artifact, a deployable artifact would be created, including uh, this new environment variable. This artifact would be pushed to an Amazon uh, Elastic Container Registry, where it then becomes available uh, for deployment. So the platform orchestrator would have um, an automatic deployment rule, for example, uh, which would pick up this new um, uh, container image and then make sure that it's getting uh, deployed to the, to the right cluster, where, for example, the development environment of this application um, is is living in. So when building an automated test for this kind of scenario, I would include verifications for the following steps. So for example, is the GitHub action actually triggered, right? So this can be the question if there is like some, like for example, if you're using um, uh, templating like um, repository templates, which could be available in a service catalog, and you um, uh, and, and this whole um, uh, project would be um, created from a template. Then um, I want to make sure that it actually includes the correct pipeline trigger, right? So in um, GitHub, for example, you need to make sure that uh, GitHub actions are actually enabled and that they are actually be actual uh, triggerable. So that could be a potential error case, and I would uh, build in a verification in an um, in an automated test uh, for this, for example. And then I would check: uh, was the push to the ECR successful? Is my image actually available there? Right, so um, I would use my automated test to to check directly in Amazon in the ECR and check if my container image with the tag I passed on uh, is actually available, or maybe even if the tag has the right uh, has the right format you you, you have provided. And then I would talk to the uh, platform orchestrator API uh, to check if the deployment was successful. And uh, finally. I would build an automated test um, uh, to check basically inside the EKS cluster um, uh, to see if the deployment is up and running, if the uh, uh, app is, uh, is is available, so if the if the pods are up and running, and then I would uh, also verify that the environment variable is um, environment variable is available inside the container. That's nice in theory, but how? Do you actually build an automated test doing like this, uh, doing these sort of things? Um, let's talk a bit about lessons learned at Humanitech. At Humanitech, we provide essentially building blocks uh, for your internal developer platform, like the platform orchestrator, like score.dev, uh, and also resource drivers. And as a QA engineer working at Humanitech, it became uh, quite clear to, to me or also the rest of the team uh, that automating these kind of user stories for an IDP setup is more than building your, usually, your usual UI and API tests. So we essentially needed to be more flexible with our testing frameworks, which should allow us to integrate with things like the um, GitHub API, so we can um, check if a pipeline was correctly triggered. We needed to be able to involve cloud provider SDKs for AWS. So for example, we've built this part in, in Python and we're using the Boto3 library provided by AKS. And then we could easily check if, um, if an image has arrived in an, uh, in an ECR, for example. And then um, we needed to involve the Humanitech API to check if the deployment was successful. And we also needed to uh, talk to the Kubernetes API um, to be able to check on deployments and on pods. Um, yeah, so this was uh, quite an interesting and challenging task. And we decided um, uh, to use um, a testing framework called uh, the robot framework. Let's talk a little bit what 
this is about. It's essentially um, a very flexible uh, framework. You can do your usual API testing and, and UI testing with this. There's plenty of libraries available to, to integrate with robot framework. For example, like uh, doing playwright tests on, on, on the UI can be done uh, through ro robot framework. Um, but there can be also like many other integrations can be done. It's quite um, uh, readable. Um, the uh, test format as it's um, basically keyword driven. So you define keywords and then those keywords get uh, executed and, and do certain tasks for you. Uh, so this is really nice for the for the rest of the team as the tests basically provide uh, also a thorough documentation on, on what's happening and, and um, uh, what is this test supposed to be doing. And especially in a platform setup, this makes a lot of sense um, because there's so many stakeholders involved and, and not everyone has a full picture of, of what's uh, supposed to happen. So these tests um, uh, serve as a great source of, of documentation as well. And then on top of that, uh, Robot Framework makes it also very easy to build your own integration. So we decided um, to actually build a uh, wrapper around the Kubernetes API uh, ourselves. And it's uh, also uh, available as an open source project. And it's called the Cube Library. And with this um, kind of wrapper, we can uh, basically do all sorts of, uh, of assertion of, of tests. Basically, it provides us with a lot of possibilities. Um, we can, I don't know, um, uh, get the cluster role or get um, uh, check on the health check of the, of the Kubernetes cluster. All these sort of things are basically exposed and available uh, inside the Kube library. And the nice thing is that we get uh, also uh, good documentation with this, essentially. Um, yeah, so much about uh, our testing approach. So thank you very much. And um, I would like to quickly remind you about the key takeaways um, I, I, I think are worth uh, keeping in mind. So please think about how to test your platform setups. Uh, it's an important topic. I highly encourage you to involve professional testers or QA experts uh, on this. Like we, we, we know how to test software and how to deliver products and your pl platform should not be um, uh, that different. And then uh, one of the key takeaways uh, we learned at Humanitech is basically doing a, um, a good decision on your uh, testing framework for, for automation, uh, which allows you essentially to cover all aspects of your platform. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.